Welcome to episode six of Podmates. Tonight we're joined by Carrie Holzman, the co-host of the Computer America Show. The Computer America Show is the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show about computers. It's been running for 17-plus years. You can catch the show live 10 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern Time on the Business Talk Radio Network or Lifestyle Talk Radio Network, Monday through Friday. And for more information, the website is www.computeramerica.com. Now, Carrie's been doing computer repair for 19 years, and we are very, very fortunate to have him with us tonight. Um, I can't wait to hear what he has to say. He's going to dip into his PC repair toolkit and give us some of his favorite tools he uses for fixing PCs. Hey, Carrie, thank you very much for joining us. How are you doing tonight? Oh, well, thanks for having me. Doing good, thanks. How are you doing? Fantastic. Good, good. Yeah, you know, I was listening to your show, and I, and I thought, you know, I'd have to email this guy and see if I can't get my foot in the door. And, and I appreciate you uh, humoring me and, and having me on. No, it's not humoring you. I really appreciate having you on. So thanks for joining Great. us. Well, it's my pleasure. And, you know, I thought we'd just get right to it and talk about some of my favorite tools that I have in my PC Tech Toolkit. You know, I say a, a mechanic is only as good as his tools. I think a mechanic who only has a wrench and a screwdriver to work with uh, can't do as good of a job as a mechanic who's got, say, a whole kit of tools with which to select from. Sure. And a PC tech, in a similar fashion, is only as good as the tools a PC tech has to work with. And we don't just necessarily mean hardware tools like screwdrivers and wrenches, but software tools as well. Sure. So what are some of your favorite tools? Well, some of my favorite tools uh, are, are even free tools. I mean, let me focus on some of the free tools first. Sure. I think everybody could benefit from using a program called Dial-A-Fix. And Dial-A-Fix is available for free at www.dialafix.net, not .com, but .net. And it's all one word, dialafix.net. It's a little tiny utility. You can put it on a flash drive if you're fixing other people's computers. You don't need to install it. You can just run it right off the flash drive. And what it does is it re-registers a bunch of Windows DLL files that often get messed up through spyware infections or who knows what users do to cause this. But... Uh, it, it's sort of a basic uh, remedy that you can run on a computer. It won't cause any harm. It won't make it any worse. And oftentimes could limit or reduce, rather, the number of repairs you have to do from that point forward. So, for example, it'll fix Windows Update. I mean, how often have you seen that where Windows Update doesn't work and you've got to re-register all those DLLs by hand with the start, run, reg server 32 space, something dot DLL. It's a pain. Sure. It does it for you automatically, and it does it to a bunch of different Windows applications and services that are part of Windows, and it's fantastic. I can't speak highly enough of it, and in the right situation, you'll understand what I'm saying when it, when it saves your bacon, and it, it just makes life so much easier to have this automated process than doing it all by hand or trying to find that, that knowledge base article to figure out which, reg which DLLs it is that you have to re-register sure. it. So when, when would somebody use this, when they're seeing a specific type of error? or I think if you were going on site to fix a Windows computer, you could make it part of your routine to just run the darn thing in spite of what the complaint is. That's great. Because it's, not, it's just re-registering DLLs that should be registered to begin with, so it's not going to hurt anything. Right, right. Um, I've seen it where the Windows desktop doesn't come up right, and it'll fix the Windows shell, it'll fix uh, problems with, well, with Internet Explorer 6, you don't want to run the IE repair wizard if you've got IE 7 installed. That's that's not a good idea. He hasn't updated it yet for that. But okay. but generally, the, the full full screen offers different fixes from Windows Update to uh, to the crypt the crypt what's it called? I'd have to run it to tell you. But okay. it, it's a great utility. There's a full wiki that explains everything it does, and it's free, and it's a, a wonderful tool to have in your toolkit. Now, you know, I would use it on a spot if Windows Update wasn't working, that's for sure. Okay. But there may be other things that aren't working. Maybe Control Panel doesn't open. or maybe I mean, this will fix a lot of that stuff. And there may even be problems you don't even know are wrong with the computer. And that's why I say if you're running it on a customer's computer or a commu computer you're not familiar with, this just sets everything back the way Windows wants it, you know, the way it was installed initially with regards to, DLLs, Windows DLLs, 
and how they're registered in the in the registry. So it's not going to make any application stop working or anything like that. If it can't that, hurt, I mean, if it can't hurt, then why not? Right. So it may be fixing problems that you aren't even aware are broken is what I'm getting at. And that's why it's a good idea to just go ahead and run it on any unfamiliar system just so you can move forward from there. Yeah, it sounds like a great tool. I I have not used that, but I'm definitely going to grab that as soon as uh, we're done the call, actually. Uh, another great tool is if you're someone who's always having to, like you work for a company and they always get uh, HP or Dell computers and they're loaded with what we call like crapware. Right. The PC decrapifier, I don't know if you've ever used it, uh, is an automated process to remove all the trialware oh, from brilliant. Dell computers. But it'll also run on other manufacturers as well. It's intended for Dell. Uh, PCDcrapifier.com. Free, completely free. Great. You know, Sony is actually coming out with, um, they're doing decrapifying at their factory, and they're going to charge you $50 more to have, if you buy a computer with all the crap already taken off. Yeah, well, it's not that, I don't think it's that they're taking it off. They're just not putting it on to begin with. Right, and they're they not right. They're probably getting $50. They're probably getting 25 I'm guessing, right. from all the manufacturers of the third-party software to have it placed onto thousands of computers, and they'll charge you 50 to not put it on. <laughs> it's amazing. So any way to make a buck, you know? Exactly. So, I mean, you can do it yourself, and there's applications, and this would probably run on a Sony computer, too. I'm sure, sure. a lot of the, the freeware, or not the freeware, a lot of the trialware that's installed with a Dell is the same stuff, in many cases, as what's on an HP or a Compact or a Sony. Right. Sounds like a good tool. So, that's a great tool. Another one that I really, really love and I have in my toolbox is called OffCrack, O-P-H, Crack. Yes. And it's a downloadable ISO image that you burn to a CD. And when a customer drops a machine off to my shop and I, and I get it to boot and it comes up with a password for the login for the username, right? I shake my head <laughs> and I call the customer and I always get voicemail. And I can't work on the computer until I get that password. Well, I boot the computer to off crack. An off crack will boot and start running without having to push any buttons or keys or dials or nothing. Just put it in the CD-ROM, boot to it, and it'll start cracking any account passwords automatically. Wow. I've used so that, too. It's, to... it's Linux-based, right? And it just boots right from the CD. Yep. Yep. And, and that way I'm not resetting the user's password. I'm not having to clear them. There's some utilities out there that wipe the password out. I'm not doing any of that. I'm actually getting the real password. And then if I want to make a change to it, I can log in with the password and then go to user accounts and remove the password that way. Because sometimes there are some negative side effects if you remove the password with some of these other utilities that just completely wipe it out. And you might find that documents and settings, uh, the My Documents folder is no longer accessible to the user. Which is?